this afternoon to facilitate uh, this very important event on the promotion of carbon markets in Namibia. As you may recall, Namibia is one of the early movers when it comes to developing frameworks on carbon markets. And uh, we have developed our carbon market framework with all these associated facilitative documents. We have of course worked on the registry so far, which we believe will be a way for a comprehensive approach on promoting carbon markets in Namibia. I strongly believe that carbon markets are quite vital for developing countries to raise money to also attract foreign investment in key sectors and also to benefit our communities where these projects are being implemented. Benefit immensely from this type of initiatives. Opening remarks by our environmental commissioner, Mr. Tondeus Mufet, then uh, remarks by UNDP, and then we get into the three presentations before we, we will close. Uh, without further ado, I would like to call upon the, the environmental commissioner, Mr. Tondeus Mufet, deliver a few opening remarks. Let me extend a word of welcome to our event as we discuss and to hear uh, Namibia is where we are when it comes to the development of our framework. Uh, as it has been said by the Petros, that Namibia has been actively involved <laughs> in uh, negotiating uh, Paris Agreement and the Article 6 that uh, provide the ways for developed developing countries to be involved in this carbon market for which as a developing countries we hope this paved ways for countries like Namibia really to benefit as a country, for our communities, and also for our private sector. So we have been on this journey, as uh, Petrus has said, and we got assistance from our development partners to engage at a national level in a number of consultations and meetings where we brought everybody on the table to start the discussion, and now we put a uh, draft framework on the table that uh, we want to launch as quickly as it's approved by the government. That is very, very important. That framework is very critical for us as it will give us the policy directives how are we going to do it. We were very lucky to learn from a few countries who have developed and we visited a number of countries and we have seen what they are doing and we learned or we took those lessons. The private sector in Namibia and other stakeholders are key. They are already approaching our office to see how they can reject the initiatives we registered. But uh, we think we saw put them on hold while we have got this policy direction <coughs> framework with the aim really to make sure that output of such framework is to the benefit of our country, our environment, our investors, private sector, natural resources, and then our communities for the owners of these resources. So we have got the team here that has been involved with understanding. I think they will give you a good picture of where we are and what are we planning to have. And uh, I'm very happy to, to see all of you. And uh, I think we're going to have a good discussion. And as a country, before we finalize, I'm looking forward for your input. So please feel free 
engage us, and then we are here to also learn from your experience and you know, your knowledge as we are about to finalize this one. From the government point of view, we wanted this one to be finalized as quickly as possible. We wanted to do it before the end of this year, before this call. Thank you so much. Uh, big, big thanks to the government of Namibia, first and foremost. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mufati, for your remarks, and thanks to our moderator uh, for having us here today to talk about this really breakthrough uh, initiative of uh, the promotion of carbon markets and the journey in developing a carbon registry and transparency system. As was mentioned before, um, I'm Claudia, I work in the Climate Club of UNDP, and we have a flagship initiative, global, it's called the Climate Promise. And under this kind of promise, uh, we have a key contribution from the government of Japan, which really helps go that extra mile in um, not just the NDC planning, but NDC implementation. Um, it really allows for some cutting edge action on the ground, and in the case of Namibia, it was the key instrument to be able to have this um, carbon market framework and also a digital public good on carbon registry. Um, but I also want to mention that Namibia is a big, big champion um, in transparency overall, uh, in anything that has to do with the enhanced transparency framework. It's one of the very first developing countries that we help in UNDP to access Jet resources from their transparency report that will be submitted next year under the enhanced transparency framework, and also implements uh, the capacity building initiative for transparency. So all of these um, initiatives are related and really join the dots to, to help put the country in a path that it can really um, accelerate the, um, the implementation of its NDC and tracking of its NDC. Um, I don't want to repeat what was said, I would just like to mention a few things about the digital public good of the carbon registry. So, digital public goods really contribute to a more inclusive, sustainable development, and it contributes also to building the digital public infrastructure that is needed for countries to be able to accelerate climate action. Um, in this case, the carbon registry is a crucial tool for tracking, for verifying, for issuing, and managing carbon credits in the context of climate actions. And we all know that carbon markets are one of the, if not the most, um, critical ways to really um, attract financing for the NDCs. It's an open source software uh, whose source code is made available to countries. It allows them to modify and update the tool um, and also gain a sovereign carbon registry that is managed and hosted by the country. Um, the platform also has um, advanced security protocols for reliable and secure operations and it's actually been accredited as a digital public good by the DPG Alliance. I would like to really commend Namibia for its commitment to addressing climate change to its innovative solutions. Uh, I would like to also acknowledge uh, the role of the National Statistical Agency, NSA, in hosting the platform in partnership with the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism, with the authorization via the Office of the Prime Minister. This is a tool that can help serve, hopefully, as a model for many other nations. In fact, in the case of Namibia, there's been an exchange with Ghana and also with Japan. It was a study to, to, um, to Japan, and hopefully this will really serve as a model to more developing countries. And I feel really hopeful and optimistic about innovations such as this one being launched in a country like Namibia to really help accelerate the climate targets in the country. So thank you very much, and we look forward to hearing from the experts. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I am Aniru. Uh, I'm with Mumitra. We're a soil carbon <laughs> project developer, trying to work with. Uh, uh, the cattle ranchers in Namibia uh, uh, and see how they can get a, gain access to carbon fibers and of course create adaptation uh, and mitigation at scale. Yeah. The DPG carbon registry has really developed as a global and universal registry that can be applied in any country, in any context, for national trading, for international trading, for all types of projects, from soil carbon to, to energy. As such, it's, it's somewhat generic. And as soon as you go into a national context, it has to become a lot more specific. This starts with very simple things like replacing our generic logo with C logo of Namibia. Um, it goes into slightly more difficult things like having the Namibian format for tax numbers and identifying that a company registers their tax number that is an actual tax number, not some random random other string. So these are the simple applications. But then there's also slightly more difficult ones, like 
the set of nationality sets, or the um, the various types of additional certifications that a project can have. For example, you could have a, just a plain carbon project, or a carbon project that also is certified by the climate, community, and biodiversity standards. So we could introduce an additional stamp in the registry that you have generic projects, and then you can add one stamp, or two stamps, or three stamps that then third parties can add to the project. Um, the most important part of adapting is really though the national book. And there I have to first again compliment National Statistics Agency Namibia. They have been they have proven to be an extremely competent host and also have a, a very solid security understanding. So at the the setup of the registry at the moment is that there is the main registry that's operating in the National Statistics Agency in Nipak. Then there's a copy in the central bank. And then there's a second copy in a different town, also in the CNSA. So, if should anything go wrong, you can always like double and triple check and make sure everything that has like if there's a mistake, you can always restore from the backup. And I think this is one of the most robust ways to keep national sovereignty and at the same time have the full security. You know, even if there's a lightning strike and your computer burns, you can still restore and continue operating. Um, in terms of adjusting the registry itself, so this is when we come from software, from really coding and hosting and DevOps as we call it, to design. So, and this is this is the software part. This is the moment when my colleagues and my friends had to open the software and in our installation try to actually upload the documents and push the button to issue the credits. And already we discovered that there are some, some things that were just difficult to find, or some buttons that were too, too small, or you know you had to open a separate window and that wasn't really necessary. And so we went back to the desk, back to the developers, redesigned those issues according to the national requirements. Honestly, I think your input makes the DPG a lot better for everyone. And this is also the goal of the DPG, that every time it's employed, we learn, we adapt. We learn, we adapt. And as the first adapter, we learned a lot from many years. So, a big thank you for the testers. Um, at the current stage, the registry is operational, but we are still short of running an actual project. And I can guarantee you that the first time we do that, there will be something going wrong, and we will probably need to make some more adaptations. For that, we also set up a what we call a, a pipeline for updating and upgrading. So, there is a um, what we call a production environment, where you would hold the actual carbon credits and the financially relevant system. But there's also a staging environment. So it's just a copy of the same registry, but then you change something, when we update something, when we solve some problem that the registry might have, we do it in the staging environment first, also hosted by NSA. We test if it actually works, and only when it actually works in the staging environment, we update it. And yes, I'm hoping to see the first Actual end to end test with an actual project beginning early next year. So, very much looking forward to that experience. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think I can be seated. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Before I go into the NDC, I, I quickly want just to give the current uh, greenhouse gas emission profiles for Namibia. Uh, according to the latest value of the report, which we submitted in 2020, Namibia remains a carbon sink, right? That means that our emissions, which at the, by 2016, they were literally 20,000 gigagrams of carbon dioxide. Our emissions, their removals exceed the emissions, so we are at it. So that already puts us in the good advantage to benefit from the, from the carbon markets. If I go per sector, I would like to hear there's somebody from working on livestock issues. In Namibia, livestock happens to be one of the biggest emitters. That's now followed by road transport at the moment as we have lots of vehicles on the roads. So these are the sectors which we really targeted when we're coming up with the NDC targets to see how we can reduce that and how the carbon market can come in and complement it. And the last, um, the second biggest emitter will be the oil, the oil industries. There's mostly your cement production, which is the main emitter. The last, the last one being the worst, uh, worst sector, with only 1% of the emissions. So what did we put in the NDC? So we are saying the scope of the NDC is the whole country territory. We are covering all the sectors. I mentioned your energies, your industries, your agriculture, forest, and 
West. Similarly, also, I think that will be the, the, the concentration of the carbon market. We are covering all the gases, and then in the base year, which we used was 2010, now going to into 2030, and of course, this has to be revised every uh, well, five years as per the, 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 the decisions. So, what we are saying is that with our NTC, we are aiming at reducing 11.90 million metric tons of carbon dioxide. This is two way for the target. What we look at the reducing emissions at the same time increasing our emissions. So we want to reduce our emissions by 7.669 metric tons of carbon dioxide at the same time concurrently increasing our removals by 4.233 metric tons of carbon dioxide. So in total, the whole mitigation potential for the country will be 11.902 metric tons of CO2. Most of this, of course, the, the, the targets are mostly from the AFORU sector, which is 67% of them, then from the energy and IPPU and the West, the West sector contributing to, to the rest. So if we go per, per sector, mostly under the energy sector, we are talking about substituting fossil fuel best uh, with renewable resources. There are lots of projects currently in the pipeline uh, under the various institutions in the energy sector. For example, there's the, there's the Toshkoto Bahamas energy plant, whereby they're trying to use inverter bush to, to produce electricity, which is one project which can perhaps also benefit from, from, from the carbon market. And also we are talking about the, under the road transport, we are talking about the substitute of uh, fossil fuel with green hydrogen technologies, but uh, the cars are not running on diesel, and all of these are potential uh, carbon market projects. Also we are talking about replacing a certain number of vehicles with renewable and uh, with, 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 to run on electric, uh, electric vehicles. I'll just be highlighting a few, but I think the whole detailed report can be provided. If I go into details, it will take us the whole day. Under the, the industrial processes and product use, we are basically talking about the, the, the replacement of 10% of clean air, which is the chemical which causes the emissions in cement production, with another, another alternative that will reduce our emission, and that can also be potentially a, a carbon market uh, uh, project. Under the, the rat sector, which is the refrigeration and air condition, we are talking about retiring some of this equipment which contain the HFCs and the PFCs in such a way that there is there are no emissions from them, at least 10% of those. And the agriculture, forest and land use, I think one key or controversial <laughs> target we set there is to fatten at least 147,000 heads of cattle and feedlots thereby reducing your emissions because with the emissions of livestock is that the more it needs to walk from around to eat, the more it needs energy, the more it needs energy, the more it feeds, the more it feeds, the more methane it produces. So we are saying if it's kept in a feedlot, you are reducing emissions by certain percentage, which can also be potential uh, carbon market project. I'm sure it's a bit controversial because farmers will tell you that you took, uh, it, the, the, the quality of the meat won't be the same because they, they don't need to walk so much, but anyways, it's another controversial one. And, uh, and the croplets, we are looking at uh, uh, enhance our so carbon sequestration by using biochar uh, and croplets. And also, we are talking about uh, enhance our carbon sequestration using biochar and compost in grassland. Also, improve soil abundant carbon through aftercare to prevent re encroachment, especially in areas where they've been pushing crossed. So, aftercare is really very important there. Yeah? And uh, the waste sector, we are really just looking at the composting of at least 112 tons of waste after segregation. They, this is also another uh, potential carbon market project. We are talking about recovery of gas at, at landfills for, 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 for energy production. We are talking about reducing open burning of waste by 2030. Most towns, small town councils in Namibia still uh, burn when the landfill becomes full, so we are trying to reduce that, that thereby reducing our emissions from that, sec from that sector. Yeah, and then there's the adaptation component, however, I won't go into that. So there are lots of opportunities if you look, look at the targets which we set ourselves. I, I believe there are lots of targets and uh, opportunities for us which we can use the carbon market to actually help us reach most of these targets which we had set ourselves. I think, in short, uh, 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 and there, there is an adaptation component. Of course, there are for benefits between mitigation and adaptation. But if I go into those, it's another <laughs> day to, 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 to explain.
Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Audi, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, okay, good afternoon once again. Um, I will uh, quickly just um, highlight uh, some of the major key issues um, that, that we have addressed in the Namibian Public Markets Framework. Um, it's a good thing that Mr. Arikan already touched on some of the key mitigation activities that are covered in the NDC. Uh, which uh, basically our carbon market framework is used uh, that NDC and it's uh, a little bit different from most countries where they, they, they've got some type of different lists in terms of uh, the project eligibility um, for carbon project generation. So most of our project activity in the NDC will be liable to be able to qualify for uh, carbon market framework generation uh, using various formats. So, uh, NAIB has developed a carbon markets framework uh, that will help to meet the country's emission targets and uh, financing requirement requirements for uh, both mitigation and adaptation. Um, we uh, conducted um, uh, 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 this in an assessment to identify the gaps, capacity gaps, uh, technical gaps, and uh, trade visibility of assessment to identify which carbon crediting mechanism best applies for Namibia given the type of the different of the type of economy that it is operating within. And uh, the framework that is developed that is now available is set out to it sets a foundation um, for a policy and administrative um, uh, framework that guides a model of that, that, that guides how various carbon markets and carbon carbon development processes um, are being done. And they are also um, there is also a digital manual that is available to be able to guide each and every project developer, um, uh, policy makers, um, uh, any players, various players within um, the, 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 the carbon market spectrum, and they know what is their role and where do they fit you know, into the Namibian context of um, participating in the carbon markets. Um, one very important statement uh, that has been done by is that the carbon markets framework has been developed but it is not yet operational, it is yet to be finalized, so it is very important to note uh, that um, there are uh, all, most of the various steps that are required are in place, but it is also um, pending after approval. Um, our carbon markets uh, framework for Namibia it establishes the rules and procedures for participating or generating credits under um, Article 6.2. Uh, in Article 6.4, um, um, of course, that, that, that is under Article 6, as well as it provides for um, array uh, modalities for participating in the bundled carbon markets. What this essentially means is that for both um, under Article 6 and bundled carbon markets, uh, Namibia will be able to provide um, a, a launch track for projects, and but it will also that will also mean that either it's on the carbon markets or it's under UNF C uh, Article 6. Uh, government will be recording all the credits that will be generated within the country. This is set to enhance the transparency as mentioned and also to be able to account for all contributions towards the NDC and those credits or those emission reductions that have been transferred as internationally transferable mitigation options. Um, the, uh, in terms of uh, okay, I'll skip that. In terms of um, how one gets to participate, or one how one one gets to participate within the Namibian carbon markets um, landscape. Uh, the Article six point two and Article six point four mechanisms um, are provided for where all conditional mitigation actions that are in the NDC would qualify for the generation of carbon uh, credits, and all mitigation actions that are also outside the NDC scope can also be able to qualify for carbon credits generation, but that will mean that this is going beyond uh, what is accounted for in the NDC. And Article 6.4, um, all conditional mitigation actions will be qualified, and Article 6.4 mitigation contribution for all authorized emissions <coughs> reductions will also be able or need to be accounted for under Article 6.4 yeah. mechanism. Um, Similarly, if, uh, they, if there are um, some um, mitigation actions that are outside the NDC, 
other articles that we they can also be then however that will be done on a case by case basis pending uh, the, the approval um, of, uh, of, of, of 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 the carbon markets unit that I also talk about. Um, depending on the tracking uh, that on the MDC tracking. Why why it is set out as this is we did not restrict um, developers and private sector to say you can allow you can only develop these type of projects. We allow projects to be developed, but of course with the support of an efficient and effective NDC tracking system, we'll be able to identify which projects can we transfer as in the nature transfer the mitigation options and which projects can we only implement under VCI. Um, for volatile carbon market projects, you can be able to implement anything as long as we do not have to transfer uh, them outside the country, it can also be uh, accounted for in our NDC. Um, we, uh, within the framework, uh, we're also accounting for um, the um, uh, administrative framework. That uh, gives who manages carbon market projects in Namibia and as mentioned is under the climate change unit. Uh, the Namibia carbon markets will be managed under uh, the Namibia carbon markets unit and the modalities of its operation are being set up with the support of the World Bank. Um, I believe uh, this is already uh, ongoing. Uh, yet to be advised on it, but they are measures that have been to be put in place to ensure for that. This also automatically means that uh, the costing arrangements for the carbon markets uh, projects, your, your um, authorization fees, project registration fees, um, all that um, is with regards to even the cost benefit sharing is also in the process of being developed in support um, of the World Bank and GNDP. I'm not going to talk much uh, on projects and target sectors, but I would just like to highlight uh, a few issues around the various opportunities that are there. Uh, there is immense opportunities around renewable energy, solar, uh, waste, uh, green hydrogen, wind, wires. Um, but I'd like to draw two uh, promising projects that um, are in Namibia. The first, we have done, um, uh, UNDP supported uh, Previous building study for forest carbon, and uh, Namibia hosts the this part of the Kavangos and Waste Transfer Conservation Aid, which has got immense uh, core benefits that comes with it in the project of that aid. So, um, such projects under forestry um, are going to offer a lot of opportunity. Secondly, um, biochar is another big opportunity that is being had. South Pole, um, and here is it, they've developed a previous leader system looks at the potential for ecosystem payment services and carbon rate reduction from biochar. So that is, and, and this can be applied even in terms of soil carbon, uh, your rainland and restoration, and um, in agriculture, so it, they are, there is quite massive opportunity uh, with biochar, and um, it's also something that uh, is a major highlight in terms of project pot potentials um, in uh, in Namibia. Um, lastly, um, I would like to indicate that going forward, um, it's indicated that we look forward that early next year, January, February, it cannot be specific, but we look forward that we're going to finalize in terms of approval and adoption. This approval will also come together with the low emissions regulations in terms of the legal aspect that is going to support or regulate or the operational of the government. And the revenue model will also be available, the institutional arrangements will be available, and the government will start to implement agreements with various players, maybe uh, be it Japan, be it uh, Switzerland, um, to now get opportunity and create a platform for Article 6 operation. Um, with this, um, I would not want to take much uh, of your time. Um, I'd like to say something that with interest in participating in the global market should consider. Most of the time, this commissioner sitting here, our offices are flooded with a lot of inquiries. We want to participate, we want to participate, yes. But then, when I tell them what they should do, they don't come back. None of them came back. I don't know if they think I lied to them or what, but I want to give now the opportunity to pass 
from Omitra, which is a, an international company that has been making a number of uh, carbon market projects across the world, to speak briefly, only three minutes, about the key steps that uh, our entrepreneurs and everybody have to be considering in the one to the carbon market. Thank you so much, Chairperson, uh, for this opportunity. So, yes, we were across the world, uh, the Chihuahua and the Sonora Deserts in Mexico, the smallholder farmers in India, and giving them access to carbon finance because, uh, you know, soil measuring soil has been a very expensive and tedious process. We've uh, automated that, leveraging our uh, remote sensing technology, and of course we go through uh, third-party certifications and through UNFCCC certified uh, carbon auditors, or the BBBs as they're called. Uh, so in our experience from across the 11 Global South countries that we work in, there's a couple of things, uh, and every country is different, a couple of things that we believe all project developers uh, should be doing. Uh, first is of course, don't dictate terms because uh, to, to, to the local stakeholders because believe it or not they know what's better for them, right? So forging and forming localized partnerships is a key, key step. So for example, as we're entering into Namibia, uh, the NNFU is one of our key stakeholders, right? Because they are the stewards of the land. They are going to be there for the next 50 years, for the next 100 years. We may or may not be there. Right? We wouldn't want to be there, but they are the stewards of the land. Secondly, is creating uh, an inclusive and an equitable environment. Uh, inclusivity meaning, uh, you know, for example, the rangelands have somehow always been left out of global carbon markets because of the high cost of the market. So how we've tried to do it is lowering the cost and bringing them into the ecosystem and creating very, very large uh, carbon sinks. Uh, equitability. The farmers who are doing the work on the ground, they are doing the hard work. So they should be provided with the majority of the credit value. Let's not... Uh, I mean, the food systems, for, for some reason or the other, have been broken because the farmer gets this much, uh, the middle person gets this much, and the supermarket makes probably 400%. Let not the carbon market mimic uh, the food market. Let's flip it. Let the farmer, or the carbon farmer in this case, get the majority. Let the local implementation partner, who's a very key stakeholder, because the capacity building has to go on day on day, not for one year, two years, three years, but for many decades. And they need an incentive as well, right? They need an incentive to keep their operations going. So make them the key stakeholders and, uh, you know, we're from the Silicon Valley, so provide them with equity into the project. And thirdly, of course, once again, probably mimicking the food system, remove all information asymmetry, right? Because that creates mistrust among all stakeholders. Let the farmer know, let the partner know how much carbon is being sequestered. What was it traded for? Let them be aware of the con free and informed prior consent is such an important part which is unfortunately not happening in all carbon projects across the world. Let that be sort of the principle as you build your framework on. Whether it's a renewable energy project, whether it's a waste energy, green hydrogen, biochar, or of course in our case, uh, soil carbon. So yeah, transparency, inclusivity, don't dictate terms and forge localized partnerships. Uh, and yeah, be data driven as much as you can. Be data driven and let the community, because it's it's been known now that the traditional practices uh, are far superior than what we've been sort of trying to push over the past uh, decades. So let's bring them back along with modern technology and I think that's a win-win-win situation uh, for everybody. And with this, I hope I'm under three minutes and I'll leave my time. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there has been a pressure, a lot of pressure for us to, to, to finalize this framework. But it's um, strange. There has been a bit of a mess under the city of cleaner development mechanism. And that's why things are the way they are today. There's a lot of uncertainty in terms of carbon pricing. They are not standardized approaches to pricing the, the, the carbon for different sectors. Each sector has its own value. 
sell us and then we tell you the price. The buyer can also tell you the price. So all, all these things, especially for us, any movers, we need to be extraordinarily careful to make sure that we do things right in a, in a sustained approach.